everybody. It is a Wednesday, July 16th, I believe, and I am Ashley Fields with Yard Us. I'm so glad you're joining us tonight. We will be painting our Christmas bulbs, our ornaments, as well as some new plain presents. Hey, Debbie, I'm so glad you're here. Hope you're doing good. Long time no see. I um, totally forgot that I had come up with a, a very simple present pattern and I completely forgot to release it um, at the beginning of the month. Hi Joyce, hey Debbie, hey Connie. So you guys are gonna be seeing me working on some of these tonight. I, I loaded these online, they're $9. They're 14 inches tall and 10 inches wide and $9. So these are new, y'all have never seen these. I completely forgot about them. Um, so we're gonna be working with some of these tonight as well as our ornaments. So uh, I left one outside. Nope, no, I'm about to say I left one outside. No, I didn't. I'm going to show you all some of the things we're going to do today. This one I did in a buffalo plaid uh, with white, gray, and black. So that's that's a version that you could do. Y'all could see in the light, too, how many times I've repainted it because I actually came in and got Carly's name on there earlier, and I didn't care for it. But here's one type that we're going to do. It's a plaid. We're going to do uh, polka dots. We are going to do some chevron. Now this one I haven't finished and I need to do some shading on it, but we I, I actually cut a chevron jig. So I'm gonna show y'all how to use that. And then I also did a plaid that is uh, crisscross. So I'm gonna show you all the different ways to do these. You, you know, you can do these on the bulbs or the presents. Um, we're just gonna kind of get started and you know, you guys can decide at the end which way, which style you like. So, hey, Connie, Mom, Lauren, I'm so glad everybody's here. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and just hop on into it because we're gonna have to get stuff painted so that I can set it aside to dry so we can move on to the next step. So, we're gonna kind of flip back and forth between a few different pieces, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started with uh, I'm gonna move my chevron. I'm gonna get started with a plaid and show you guys how to do plaid. Um, I am personally sticking with red and black and uh, white and black because that matches my house. That matches my decor that I already have going for my Christmas decorations. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can achieve a plaid look with some tape and some paint. Nice and easy, things most people have at home. Now that one I did diagonal. I'd rather show you guys just uh, horizontal and vertical. I think that might be a little bit easier to start with. So I'm gonna get started with some uh, painter's tape. This tape is about two inches wide. So first thing I'm gonna do, I hope I got enough of this. If not, it might not look so pretty. Uh, I'm gonna start right in the middle and I'm gonna get a piece of tape set down and I'm trying to eyeball it and make sure that I'm right in the middle. If you're not in the middle, by the time you get done doing this, you'll be able to see how off your, your plaid is. So start with a piece right down the middle, and then we're gonna come along on both sides of it and get another piece down. So that is what's gonna give us our spacing in between our lines. That way that spacing is consistent every time. So it doesn't matter whether you start horizontal or vertical necessarily. I just wanted to start um, vertical because that's I kind of can see the middle of my bulb down here at the bottom a lot easier. So now I'm going to take this second piece of tape and go ahead and lift it up and use it as my spacer so I'm not wasting a ton of tape. So I left it down there so I could get the space to do my next piece. And now I'm gonna come over here and bring it down and reuse this one as my trash piece. So you can see that little piece left on the edge is what I need a piece of tape for that's gonna stay on my piece. So I got some Christmas music on. I'm not sure who this is. It's like, I don't know, some 60s Christmas music or something. All right, so that same trash piece that I'm using in between everyone, I'm just gonna bring it on over here to this opposite side. Now, for the sake of time today, I am going to just go ahead and paint 
uh, my color that I'm going to use to go ahead and do the shading on my plaid. However, uh, for you guys that have more time that you're not on a live video and you have the time to do this, when if you are doing anything with painter's tape, whether it's stripes or plaid or uh, chevron or anything, it doesn't matter. Uh, typically, a lot of you guys who have worked with tape, you'll see bleeds underneath the tape. And so I've learned that if you actually do your first coat as your base color, so in this instance, if I really did my first coat as red because red's my base, that will help to prevent that bleeding underneath the tape. So for our purposes tonight, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. But I urge you guys, if you're doing this, to go ahead and start with that base color first and allow that to dry. And then you could come in with whatever color you're doing on top. So now that this is ready, like I was just saying, if I was doing the base color, I would come in with red and just push it right over top. But time-wise, we're gonna go ahead and go to shading red number 23. So uh, you can use one of those, uh, those cheap chip brushes, you know, that are like a dollar. I think we have them at the store for like a dollar. That's in fact what I was using. I just didn't happen to bring any to my table. So, oh, oops. Ashley forgetting to bring something to her table. Never. So, hey, Jessica, I'm so glad you're here and joining us. I'm kind of going to be uh, jumping all over the place tonight because we've got a lot of stuff to cover. But painter's tape is one of those things that we've always had a, um, a rocky relationship because I can't ever get my painter's tape to work with me uh, like I see it working with other people. Uh, but then I saw that, that trick or that tip of doing your base color first over top of your paint, I mean over top of your tape and then coming in with your color. And sure enough, my white and black plaid, when I just showed you guys at the beginning of the video, um, that is why those lines came out so crisp. Because I did do it on that one. You also wanna make sure when you do put your tape down that you press down on those edges and make sure that they're really attached to that board. And that'll also help with bleeds. All right, so underneath here is obviously my red paint. I'm gonna let it kind of get dry for a few minutes and get tacky, um, and then I'll take my paint up. Because it's so wet right now, I wanna wait a couple of minutes. So I'm just gonna set this one aside and go ahead and grab our next one. Um, I think the next one I'm gonna be doing is, uh, well, we could do, we'll do polka dots. And then we can do, uh, this one's going to be a chevron. So polka dots, obviously, you guys, nice and easy. I don't think we really need a tutorial over polka dots. But, hey, that's what I'm going to be doing. So I wanted to show you guys. I wanted, I specifically left this pattern blank so that you guys could um, add any design or detail that you wanted to. And you weren't necessarily locked in to the existing pattern that was there. So uh, that was intentional on my part. So I kind of just want to give you some different ideas on how you can turn your pieces into a masterpiece. And get a little bit more paint. Y'all, um, I, I can't spill the beans yet, but I can tell y'all we have some incredibly exciting things coming in the next month and month or two and um, we'll reveal when we can um, we're kind of got to make sure everything is set in stone and in everybody's schedule before we can tell y'all but um, we're gonna have a guest speaker coming in that uh, or a, a guest that'll come in and do a video and I, I think a lot of you actually know this person and I am just so excited. I can't even, I can't even. I've been so excited about it. So um, y'all stay tuned. We've got lots of fun stuff coming up. Plus, we're, we've been getting ready for um, fall, Halloween, and Thanksgiving that we'll be releasing in August. 
I actually have uh, about 90% of my blanks already cut uh, for my samples. So I just can't wait. I can't wait. I'm so excited. We, I gave some, some of the ladies in our academy a sneak peek last night of some of our new releases coming out in August. But um, here's a look at a uh, simple polka dot. I'm kind of feeling like it's a little plain up here. So allow me to just add a little bit more. Now this guy, I'm gonna move over again. We're gonna have to let this dry. Now, now I'm gonna, I have, okay, Chevron. Let's just talk Chevron for a minute. I love Chevron. Um, I searched high and low for a stencil for Chevron and all, I actually ordered one on Amazon and it came in and the stencil was about mm, half inch tall or half inch, each of the zigzags were about half inch wide. And I was like, oh, that's not going to work because stenciling anything like that, anybody who's stenciled, you'll know that it's just going to bleed right underneath there and be a mess. So stencils weren't going to work. Uh, plus, I couldn't find them in the size. And I went to Hobby Lobby looking for something to use and again, couldn't find anything. So I made a jig on my CNC. A jig is kind of like a, a pattern that you use and reuse. So this is just a Chevron jig. I did go ahead and put it on here earlier and I traced uh, this pattern directly onto my piece. Can you guys see that? I just used a pencil and my jig. And so basically I st sat it down on here and I took my pencil and I came in and I came in and I went around the back and then I, all right, I moved it up to the next layer, came in with my pencil, all right, then moved up to the next layer etc etc now uh, I understand that nobody else is gonna have a chevron jig because I just made this for myself today so what I can do though is I can take this to the store until I can figure out a better way that I can get chevron for you guys as well um, and if you guys want to swing by the store and trace it onto your piece you're welcome to uh, but at this moment this is the only piece that I have for chevron <laughs> So, uh, let's see, uh, Terry, Brian, uh, I'm so sorry guys. I didn't even see y'all come in. Miss Phaedra. So glad to see y'all. Uh, all right. So Phaedra said that she found some stamps at Michael's for less than 350 score. That's awesome. I'm jealous. Uh, I've been on a Chevron hunt y'all and it's just been nuts. I could not find anything that could possibly work. And then this thing, I didn't mean to make it so big. I could probably even make it smaller, but that's what I'm gonna be using for my Chevron. Uh, there's a ton of different taping techniques I've YouTubed, and quite honestly, the videos were like 30 minutes long, and I gave up after about five minutes. Said, nah, I'll just make my own. Uh, so that's what I ended up doing today, and um, that's what I'll be using. So since I went ahead and I've already put it on here, I'm everything I'm doing tonight is sticking with white, red, and green. Those are the uh, most popular colors that we sell. That trio for Christmas is just very popular. So you'll see me using only those colors. That doesn't mean y'all can't use other colors. This is just, I stick with what um, majority of people who purchase from us would like. So I'm gonna just do some red inside of here. Now I have my script liner. You don't have to use a script liner, but I'm trying to get some crisp and clean lines here. So we'll see how fast I can move with this. If I'm moving too slow, I might have to switch over and grab a, um, a um, mop brush. But for now, I'm gonna use my script liner. Hey, Deborah, I'm so glad you're here. I didn't see you come in. I, and Connie said, I bet you could sell your Chevron template. I probably could. If there's enough interest, I don't mind cutting some. Um, my CNC has been acting up all day. And in fact, it was trying to cut some hocus pocus patterns and 20 minutes before I went live, it was messing up. So I go to pull the file up on my computer and what do you know, the files disappeared. So it's all been a crazy headache today. So I'm trying to ignore my machine at the moment because I'm not very happy with her. So, all right, all I'm doing at this moment is coming in with my brush and backing up to those lines that I traced on here the reason I'm choosing to use a script liner is because I'm going to try to get out of, um, of having to outline this. I'd rather just get my paint in here with the outlining brush 
and I can kind of outline those lines while I'm also filling them in. Mom, it's your favorite song in the background. One of your favorite Christmas songs. If y'all want the Chevron Prater, bring some paper with you and you come to the store and pick up orders. Oh yes, you could trace the Chevron onto the paper. Honestly, this is something I, I think I got cut out at like two o'clock this afternoon. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to um, woo, get prepped with all that. All right. This is gonna take me a hot minute y'all, but I think you guys are gonna like the Chevron look. There we go, all right. A little easier now, I kind of just followed those lines, now I'm just filling it in with some paint. Now we all know this is red, and that red is not, it doesn't get the most smooth kind of coverage. You know, you can see a lot of streaks in it, but oh well, I ain't worried about it. By the time I get glitter on here, you won't see it too much. All right, so there's the top, now I'm just gonna obviously flip it and do the bottom. So, Phaedra says she loves the chevron and the colors. Thank you, Phaedra. I love red and white as a combo, and then doing a green as your accent. I am coming to the store tomorrow, so those of you that ordered football gnomes, I have those cut out, and I'll bring those tomorrow. I'll also bring this jig and you guys can use that. And as soon as my CNC gets running, I'll cut some more and uh, we'll brainstorm and make sure we come up with ways that we can get some Chevron in y'all's hands as well if you guys are wanting that. Like this one's taken a little bit but we all know that that end result is so worth the time I do want to point out, I took that jig all the way from top to bottom. I even stuck it right here and I continued to trace. So this is fully using the jig from top to bottom. I didn't really come down to the bottom and start in a new spot. I stayed in the same spot all the way down. So there is your chevron look. Now, I'm trying to think, I might wait on this one. I was gonna say, should I go ahead and shade my green right now while this dries? But I have a green present I'm gonna work on. Uh, I think we're going to do this one with some stripes. I didn't do anything striped. I did plaid. I did um, uh, chevron and I did polka dot, but I didn't do any stripes. So we're going to just do some stripes. Do y'all prefer vertical or horizontal stripes? Help me decide which one we need to do. Uh, Mary said that we're also been posting all of our live videos for the Painters Club uh onto youtube so you can you can also go find our our videos on youtube if you're trying to scroll through our our group and there's too many videos 
and you guys are getting con like lost in all the congestion, you could go look on YouTube because we now have those on there. All right, let's see. J Joyce says vertical. All right. I'm trying to see. This one might be too thick. I'm going to switch over. This one's a little bit thinner. Horizontal. I got one of each. <laughs> okay. Who's going to be the tiebreaker here? And let me know which one. Vertical or horizontal? Vertical. All right. Debbie's the tiebreaker. We shall do vertical. All right, y'all. So it's going to be the same exact way we just did the plaid as far as how you're going to tape everything. You're going to butt it up right next to one another so that you can get that correct spacing that you're going to need. Trying to see. All right, since that edge is about the same width, I'm going to use this one as my trash piece. I'm thinking some white stripes. What do you guys think? Well, that or lime green, uh, Christmas green and lime green actually go really good together. Uh, so we could, oh, oh, well look, I go and mess up my trash piece. So I guess I'll have to make me a new trash piece. So uh, I see a horizontal, vertical, vertical. Yeah, sorry, we're doing vertical, but you know, we could do it either way. I like kind of being able to ask y'all and impromptu come up with something. That's kind of nice. A little different. It keeps me from having to make all the decisions all the time. And I get tired of making decisions, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but I really do. Okay. Y'all thinking lime green? Joyce says lime green. I think we should do some lime green just so y'all can see the pop that Christmas and lime green can have together. They look really good together. I didn't bring lime green to the table, but I have it right behind here. So let me grab it. Okay. Now my tape is kind of lime green as well. So it might look a little bit weird. Now, again, if I had the time and I was not on a live, now that I have my, uh, my painter's tape down, if I had the time, I would first come in with the Christmas green and just take a brush, I don't even care what brush it is, and just paint that Christmas green, but you're gonna wanna touch up to that actual painter's tape on all sides. Now, once your Christmas green is dry or whatever your base color is, then you would wanna come in with your color that you're wanting your stripes to actually be. Purpose of that is to keep the paint from getting underneath your painter's tape and causing those, um, those kind of splatters that happen underneath that tape. So if you take your base color over first, then do your stripe color, I hope that's making sense, uh, it would be a lot easier. So time-wise, I don't have the time for that because we gotta get it to dry. So I'm moving on. So lime green. I never even really thought about lime and Christmas green together, but I had um, a couple of friends, Danae and Jessica, they had come over here, I don't know, last month or month before, and we just had a little painting party in my garage, and uh, or here in my shop, and I think it was Danae, uh, she's, we were painting some Christmas stuff and she put lime and Christmas green together or maybe it was Jessica. I don't remember. One of them did. And it was gorgeous. And I was like, wow, I just didn't, I didn't think that that would look good, but it really looked good. So I'll show y'all what this looks like here in just a minute. The good thing is I got the heat on my side in here. So stuff should dry pretty quick. Now, I'm gonna leave the tape on here, just like I said, for just a couple of minutes because it's still real wet. I'd rather it be tacky before I pull that tape up as opposed to being really wet. I got too many pieces, y'all. Okay. Now, I'm gonna swing back around to this one. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this tape now. And I can see the bleeds underneath this tape. So don't, don't be me. Don't get the bleeds. Do, if you're doing red, then do, you know, like my base is red, so I should have taken a little bit of red over top of that tape first. Ugh. Oh well. We shall all survive. This ain't meant to be perfect anyways. Okay. 
So we're starting out, there, there's some stripes here, obviously. Now, in order to make it plaid, we're gonna take our tape and go the opposite way. So I'm trying to think, yeah, this is how I did it. I'm gonna take that tape. I'm switching back to the two inch tape on this one. I have two inch and I have about one and, no, nah, this isn't even one and a half. I'd say maybe one and a quarter. Uh, it just happened to be what I have on hand. I'm using the chunkier one right now. Uh, for the presents, I'm using the smaller one. So first piece is gonna be the piece that I leave down. The second piece is gonna be my garbage piece that I'll reuse. All right, now I take my garbage up because that's gonna be where I actually paint. That piece isn't long enough for to switch it, so I'll use it here in just a second. Now I'm going to come down to the bottom, and I'm using I'm using that uh, stripe that's already across our present as my guide. I know that stripe is level, and it's a lot more level than my eye could ever be. So I'm sticking where that stripe is, and coming up with my layers according to that. So now let's use our trash piece. Are the lines that we're gonna paint in order to achieve a plaid look. So let me grab my brush back out of the water. I'm gonna sling off a little excess on the floor over here because this is a paint shop, you know, why not? And now I'm just getting that shading red again and taking it back over. Now, since this is plaid, I'm wanting to see these brush strokes, right? I don't want this thick. I am not trying to put a lot of paint on here. This paint is already watered down. And all I'm trying to do is get a, a decent enough coat so that you can just see the, the look of that plaid. I don't want it dark, dark, dark. I really prefer it to be on the lighter end. Now, I'll go ahead and pull the tape up because uh, I didn't put much on here you'll see how you can achieve plaid as simple as a little bit of tape and a little bit of paint. Ta-da! There you go. That's plaid. It's nice and easy. I don't know if anybody's attempted to do plaid before with paint. Uh, with a painter's tape and some paint, but it's not very hard. Now, let me show you the difference. Oh, the only thing I did do on this one, I did go ahead and already get the black painted in, in the middles. Anywhere where your paint crisscrosses and touches over the top and you have double layers, so like this square and this square, I would need to go ahead and put some black on there. So this is gonna be closer to a finished product. Obviously, I don't have my uh, top or the middle shaded yet, but that is this piece does have the black painted in the middle So can we add some glitter or do we have to have uh, cut groups? No, you can add glitter. It's totally up to you it, There's there's no reason you can't glitter this. Um, I just always do these as painted So I'm gonna move these out of our way for a sec Now I'm gonna come back to the striped one and let's see what this looks like it's uh, just a little on the tacky side now, so it's perfect timing uh, for pulling off that tape. The only thing I'm now thinking is I, I, want, I should have done uh, one stripe of lime, or I actually should have done this one as Christmas green, lime, Christmas green, but oh well. So there's your stripe look with lime and Christmas green. I think they make a great color combo together. I love their color combo together personally. And that's a look at that. All we gotta do on this one is shade it and uh, outline it. Let me actually go ahead, looking around, um, we need to shade and outline a few of these. 
yeah, we need to finish this one. We need to finish our chevron and our polka dot and our buffalo check. So let me grab our uh, blow dryer and see if we can't get some of these dry. So while I'm drying these, I'm gonna see what color combo is one of your Xmas, one of your Christmas trees. I'm not sure what, what you're talking about, Phaedra. You mean in like uh, the painted Christmas trees that have multicolors? Or that color combo is one of your Christmas trees. Hello, I'm not even reading that correctly. That's awesome, lime green and Christmas green? That is too cool. I do buffalo check in my entire house. Couldn't tell with my uh, wreath over here. So, lime green stripes. I use white highlights everywhere, definitely a lot of white highlights oh Deborah said she finished her Santa today that's awesome that's so awesome I'm trying to get caught up on some of the comments here this one's still really really wet so is my Chevron Get them as dry as we can and maybe just have to work around a little bit of wet paint see I, I knew i wasn't the only one that loved the buffalo chuck it's my favorite and it had to be really popular last year because every time i went to hobby lobby to get more stuff they were sold out of what i was needing because of all the buffalo chuck they sold out of their ribbon like the first week in december it was gone Luckily for me, I got my tree going in October, so I had most of what I needed by then. Okay. We're just gonna make do. That chevron is really, 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 really wet. But I wasn't planning on outlining the chevron anyways. That's why I went ahead and did it with a, um, a script liner um, so all I'm really needing to do here is shade my green on my stripe and on the top now on this stripe you can put names on here if you're somebody who wants to put a name if you have a Cricut and you know you can cut out a stencil with vinyl um, I did go to Hobby Lobby yesterday and they do have some two inch um, stencils of the alphabet and I happened to get one that was cursive and take my word for it, stay away from the cursive one, get the bubble letter ones. Um, Cause the cursive one just came out a little too squirrely for me. Uh, but that's always an option or, you know, doing it by hand. I'm sure there's some people out there that can do the hand lettering. I just don't happen to be one of them. So I'm getting that dark green number 12 and I'm just gonna get a little bit of shading on here. This is about a, a, a number 12 shader, and I'm just loading that corner of my brush. All right, let me move this. Hmm, I'm looking at the stripe one really trying to decide what to do I think I'll, I'm gonna just shade the perimeter of the box but actually leave the stripes alone because I'm afraid if I come in there and I start trying to shade an outline because these stripes are just over an inch wide it's gonna become a big blob of dark green and I don't want that so I'm just gonna do the perimeter and just stick with that and allow that to be good enough yeah, I think that'll look good once I get that shading red on here. And then now, this is our, I'm gonna have to flip back and forth between these, these three. Now this one, honestly, I probably would have liked to have done the shading before I did my, um, you know what, I'm just gonna cover it. I'm gonna cover it and then I'm gonna actually come back at the end and redo my polka dots over top of these edges. I should have done that earlier and I didn't. Woo, 
Oopsie. That's okay. I'm going to show y'all what I mean by that because I, I repeated my same oopsie earlier. Uh, I did my shading and my outlining and then I can come back in here if I wanted to and put those dots back over top of that shading instead of being behind the shading. So, all right. As far as shading green's done, or shading green goes, I'm done. I just need to do my shading on my red and then do a little bit of outline. And then these are all good to go, y'all. And then once we get done, y'all, well, I'll show all of the different ones that we kind of came up with. Oh, the plaid one. I do need to finish the plaid one. I can't forget that one. Okay. This one's just a little bit of shading red, number 23. everywhere oh my lanta forgive me i need to go to the water hose right quick and wash these off to that water really fast. Give me just a second, y'all. <laughs> I would love to say that this doesn't happen often, but that would be a total lie. Uh, I pushed it right off of that table and it splashed up everywhere. Okay. We gonna try that again. Let me move that one. Ay, ay, ay. This is why y'all see me wearing the clothes I wear. Pam, that would be something you would do. Y'all, I hear so many of y'all tell me that y'all paint inside of your houses, and that's why I'm always like, oh, how do you paint inside of your houses? Because this is the kind of stuff I do all the time. There is no way I could ever paint inside because I would ruin everything. I'm just a klutz. I've always been a klutz. Those of you that weren't here at the beginning of the video, I was letting you guys know, I completely forgot to release this present. Look at there. I forgot to release this present um, back on the first of the month. So this one I just put online today. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, it's $9. It's 14 inches tall and 10 inches wide. And it's purposefully left blank. That way you can do whatever you want with it. You can do chevron, you can do stripes, you can do polka dots, you can do plaid, you can do anything. So I really liked that um, about this pattern. So I, I only have a few cut out. I will put bring them to the store in the morning. All righty, that red shading is done on this one. Oh, that one doesn't have any red shading. I'm trying to make sure. Okay, red shading is done on all of them. Now, I'm going to go back and grab this buffalo plaid one. And we are going to put a little bit of gray shading on it. Um, I actually painted a bunch of buffalo plaid bulbs for myself uh, last December. And I played around with plaid and all the different color combinations. Trying, which for buffalo check, okay? Because that's what my house is done in. It's done in red and black, and then black and white buffalo check. So anyways, um, I played around with this because I already painted this for my house uh, back in December, and I played around with different shading colors, and the thing to me that looked the best with red and black was gray. Um, that, not something I would typically normally use. You know, if it was normal, I would be using um, my beard blue but that doesn't, that's not gonna be a color combo that goes well with this. So, I actually need to, I don't have any gray on my table, but that's okay. I'm gonna make a little bit. 
we're gonna improvise. Hey, Danae, you just missed me spilling paint everywhere. It was quite the fiasco. Hey, Jennifer, I'm so glad you're here. Debbie says she paints inside, but she glitters outside. Y'all, look, I just made a big old mess on the floor, and here I go, making a big old mess on my piece. What am I doing tonight? I am just losing it over here. Y'all know how it goes, like once you make one boo-boo, it's like after that, it's kind of like that domino effect. You keep doing it. Yeah, I know. I just cleaned it up, hopefully, as good as it'll be. All right, so I got a little bit of gray. I'm gonna lighten it just a tad. Um, I would typically just use my regular gray, but I don't have it over here at the moment, so I just mix my own. A little bit of white and black, and there you go. Okay. Now, as far as my shading goes on everything, I'm done. And now it's just coming back and doing those uh, highlights, outlines, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna switch back and grab my script liner. And on this one, we need to fill in the black squares where your paint crisscrosses. And then we need to outline it. So let me actually just blow dry for one quick second. See if I can get that gray to dry up a little bit. And then uh, that way when I'm doing the black, I can do the whole thing all at once. I think that'll be good enough. We don't gotta be perfect. Let's see if I can uh, not make any more messes tonight. The good thing about it is you can see those lines from your stripes and go in every direction. So it's already kind of written out for you exactly where you're gonna come in and make your squares. Now, when it comes to the check pattern, I don't feel like it needs to be perfect. In fact, I kind of like seeing a little bit of imperfections inside of it. It almost reminds me of like a quilt, you know? So don't expect your lines to be absolutely perfect. If you look at mine, mine are wobbly and not perfectly in line and that's okay. I'm sure if right now from y'all's angle, it doesn't look like much, but I, do, I am using number 37 black and I'm just coming over with my crisscrosses to create that buffalo check. So that's the top. Now on this, on the buffalo, I don't actually outline the outside of it. Um, that's just a personal preference. I think it looks better not outlined personally. Um, I could come in with a little bit of white and just kind of do some light, very light highlights around the perimeter. And I think that'll be good enough. Alrighty, there we go. That one is completely done. So there's your buffalo check. Um, if it was dry, I would do a little, like I said, a little bit of a white highlight on the perimeter and leave it at that. So let me move this one. Let's finish our chevron. Now, technically, yes, you can uh, outline your chevron. I'm not going to. I love the look of it as is, and I really don't want to mess with it personally. Uh, I think it looks good, and once I start messing with it, I can't go back, so I'm gonna leave it. Get a little bit of black here on my green, 
and then let it be. Uh, also, we could, we will come in and do a little bit of white um, on the chevron. It's still so, so, so wet. Uh, so I'm not sure how much I can get done on there, but I can add a little bit of a flare with some white highlights on this one. So there's a good look at that. Now remember on the stripe present, I said I was gonna leave the stripes alone. I'm not messing with them. So I'm gonna do the perimeter, the bow, and the little ribbon in black, and the rest of it I'm leaving. After our video tonight, I will get uh, these photos put uh, online on the online listings so that if you guys are looking for that, you can have those there for reference as well. And then uh, we've been adding thumbnails to the videos after we record them that have the finished, um, the finished products on the thumbnail. So I don't know if any of you guys have caught that yet or been able to uh, see that but we've been trying to get better at making sure that you guys can see those finished products really easily. white and then we got one more to outline and then we're gonna move on and do our highlights so I don't know if y'all notice but I'm always starting in the middle so that I don't drag my arm around the whole piece so start in the middle and work your way to the outside and hopefully you won't be spreading smearing paint everywhere like I do all the time Alrighty. Hi, Dolores. Hope you're doing good, honey. All right, guys. So that's it for my outlining. Now we are going to do some highlights and then a couple of the pieces. I think I have like one or two dry, uh, maybe one dry piece it looks like. No, I got two. I got two dry pieces that we could do a little bit of poly on and glitter. All right. Now I'm going to switch over. I just got more paint on my nose. Oh my goodness. I have wet paint everywhere. Everywhere I touch. I need to just go shower y'all and move away from this table. Okay. Now on this one, I am going to come back in after it dries and go right back over top of my polka dots. I should have done my shading first and I didn't. So this one is not going to be a finished product tonight. It's going to be very close, but I am going to use those daubers and come back over and just kind of acts or um, come back over top of my uh, my circles now if I was gonna add a name to this I would leave the red alone but I'm not going to add a name to this uh, so if you're not gonna add a name I like just a little bit of white going across not much if you're gonna add a name just do the name in white and that'll really make up for your um, highlights Now, this one's still super, super wet, so we'll see how this is going to look. I'm going to offload some of that. So it really came out a little bit more on the gray side because of all the wet paint, but that's all I'm doing on my buffalo plaid. A little bit of white, a little bit of black, and you're good to go. Now, chevron. I have played around with chevron and then little swish lines. The part of my chevron and doing a couple of dots. So a dot at the bottom, a dot on either side, a line, and then a dot at the top and a dot on either side. 
uh, I'm gonna finish it all the way down and then I'll show you I'll show you that look and I think you guys will see why why I went for that I think it looks so much better than just stripes or a swipes of you know your highlight to get it matching so there's the top oh my gosh I just love this this is just so cute all right let me come back over here do it on my bottom part done y'all what are y'all thinking about this so far Ta -da! how stinking cute is that I love that I absolutely love that take a little wide in here and this one, honestly, I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna put white on the green because I think I'm gonna go ahead and get a name on here with some vinyl. I just think it's too cute not to. How precious is that? So those of you that missed, uh, missed out, I made the Chevron, I made a jig on my CNC and basically traced it on here. So I'm gonna take this to the store tomorrow and it'll stay up at the store. And you guys are welcome to bring a piece up there, trace it on, or trace it onto butcher paper that you could then take home and use, uh, you know, a paper pattern of a chevron. Um, but I cut this out just this afternoon because I couldn't find anything in store or on Amazon, anywhere, that would really work for us. So, so there's that one. Hey, Victoria, how are you doing, hon? Now, I got this one. And this one I did earlier. I don't think I didn't do it on camera, but I, I need some white highlights on here. So I might, might as well just kind of bring it in here and do it. Just a few little highlights. How cute is that? And then here is our stripes. Oh no, I just realized I'm uh, missing a black line over here. I'm making messes over here, y'all. Big, big messes. Let's see. I don't, I'm kind of reluctant about this, but I'm going to try to add some white down here. Hmm. I almost feel like I should just stick with the perimeter so that it kind of matches my shading. Let it be. So there we go. We got stripes on a present. We got polka dots on a present. We have a chevron bulb. I'm going to add a name to that, so that's why the green is nice and plain. We've got polka dot bulb and buffalo plaid bulb. So that's all as far as our painting tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed these. 
Now, let me kind of move some stuff over and uh, I had two bulbs that I did paint earlier for samples and we'll go ahead and poly and glitter those together uh, before we say goodnight to each other. Move some of this. All right. Now this is one of the ones that got all the paint on it that I had to take outside and to the water hose. So and wipe it down and just make sure I don't have any loose paint. All right. Now we had, we've had a couple of glittering tutorials, but I understand not, you guys aren't always there when we're doing these. So these two are just finished for me. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, actually this one's not finished for me. I wanna add a name to this. So we're only gonna glitter one. Um, but some of y'all have seen us do the polying and some of you haven't. So I'm gonna just pretend like you haven't and I'm gonna show y'all how to do it. Um, this is your regular nap roller. I keep it in a freezer Ziploc bag, that way I can reuse it, and it keeps my hand from getting dirty putting on a roller. So uh, find your spot that has your opening. I just pull it up to the top of my bag and slide my handle in. And ta-da, there you go. Nice wet roller ready to go. Uh, this one has glitter on it, so if you're somebody who's rolling poly, I suggest on your bags you write glitter or no glitter because this one has glitter inside of it. So it's not something you'd wanna use on, you know, like a turkey. You don't want a, a sparkly turkey. All right, so you're gonna put a little bit of poly down. Um, I prefer a roller because it, number one, gives you a smooth surface that you know that every part of this piece has the same amount of poly on it. And uh, number two, quickness. Just like that, you have your whole piece covered. Now, whenever you're doing poly, I want you to think of it like a, a glazed donut. That's the easiest way I can tell it to you. A glazed donut, if you're going to Shipley's in the morning for a hot glazed donut, you want glaze all over the whole thing, right? You don't want just half of it glazed. Same kind of concept. You want your whole piece glazed nice and evenly. Now, this is that clear silver mixture glitter, okay? You're gonna season this, I, I, I use the analogy like you're seasoning meat and you want every bite to taste the same. So I know a lot of us are moms that we cook a lot. So y'all know how to season meat. You're gonna just start sprinkling it on there and you want it to just be consistent all the way across. Just like you're seasoning meat, you want every single bite to taste the same. And as simple as that, you've got glitter. and see all the sparkles. Now it's milky right now because it's, it's wet. So it has to lay flat to dry. Once this dries, which it's in the 90s still in here, it'll dry in about mm, 20 minutes. Uh, once it's dry, I come right back over top with my roller and I do a coat of just poly. That way you have your poly, your glitter inside of your poly and then another coat on top. So that, that glitter is sandwiched in between two layers of poly and that's what's gonna keep your glitter from falling off. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, let me see if we have any questions before I sign off for the night. I'm so glad you guys like that. Deidre says that she loved the dots and the lines with the chevron, cute idea. Honestly, Deidre, I've played around with chevron and I've spent hours messing with it. Repainted a piece probably eight or nine times that had chevron on it because of the highlighting and the outlining of it. I couldn't find anything that I liked. So I finally learned, don't try to outline it. In the highlighting, I preferred the dots and lines and kind of make it more dressed up. Um, and it worked for me. So that's just the way I liked it. So, all right, guys, I don't see any questions coming in. So I appreciate y'all being with me tonight. Um, I'm not sure I have the right calendar in front of me, but it looks like we'll have a tutorial on uh, Sunday with Miss Victoria. And then uh, you guys have me next Tuesday and Thursday. Now Thursday I am going out of town, so I will have my video. It'll post Thursday at 7 p.m. It just won't be a live video. So thank y'all so much for coming and hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate y'all spending time with me and asking questions and being a part of this community. Um, I've enjoyed spending my night with y'all, and I will see y'all next week. Thank you so much for hanging out. Y'all take it easy and be safe. Bye, guys.